guys, my name is Julian with Rooftop Solar and I'm going to be going over if a battery makes sense for your solar system or if just a grid tied solar system by itself with no battery is going to save you more money. Recently, I've been hearing lots of questions asking, you know, if a battery makes sense, should I consider one, is it going to save me more money, what does it even do, do I need one, etc. All of the questions. And so I decided to make a video that kind of cleared everything up so you can know more easily if you're a good candidate for a battery or just a grid tied solar system by itself. So let's explain a little bit of the existing situation so we understand it so we can know if a battery makes sense. Okay, so currently, um, just to get a couple of things straight, this is a graph that goes over when the solar production is happening versus when the, the home is actually using power. So. Uh, the green line is the solar production. As you see on the timeline here, this is noon, the middle of the day. Uh, doesn't take a rocket scientist to kind of figure out that in the middle of the day when the sun is the highest, that's when the solar is gonna be producing the most. So that's why I have between kind of like 10 and two being the peak hours. Um, but then the red line shows the, the profile of uh, energy consumption for the house. And so um, at night, you know, we're not really using very much. There's just a little bit of usage, maybe the AC fan, um, you know, uh, little night lights, little things that are on, you know, the house is never at zero. And then the family wakes up in the morning, they're using the, you know, the, the kitchen, lights come on. And then most of the time, you know, the people go to work, people, you know, leave the house in the middle of the day and your, your consumption pro profile goes down. But then everyone gets home at the end of the day, it's evening time, it's dinner, people are watching TV, you know what happens in the evening, you know, all the lights are on. And uh, this is even a larger peak during the winter uh, months like we currently are in where it gets dark so early. This is a, a little bit of a longer um, curve. Uh, so as you can see, we have a little bit of a problem here because the usage tends to not be when the production is happening. And this is kind of where the battery would help, except for in California right now, we have what's called the net metering agreement in place, which essentially means that if the house is using less power than what the solar is producing, all of the difference, which in this case would be this area, would actually be sent back out to the grid and the house would get uh, credited retail cost for however much power was sent back out to the grid. Now, in the times when the house is using more than the solar, like when the green line is underneath where the red is, we're taking all of the solar production and then also buying power from the grid. So naturally a battery could help you store this power in here instead of sending it back out to the grid. So when you get home in the evening, you can essentially use the battery power to, to use this power. So here in California specifically, we have an extremely incentivizing scenario for going solar because the state of California has forced SDG&E, PG&E, and SoCal Edison to pay you, the solar provider for the city essentially, retail costs for whatever power you backfeed. Now that makes the power here worth a lot. I mean, it's it, it's the third most expensive power in the country, and they're being forced to actually credit you the same rate as the third highest rate. It's the same retail cost. So, because we have this scenario where you know they're kind of artificially crediting you and almost subsidizing the cost, it's not worth it at this point in time to buy a battery, which would be ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars in that range, to store this power. So you can use it essentially for the where the brown towers are. And if you were in another state like Arizona or pretty much any other state, this power in here would only be worth a wholesale rate, maybe 10 cents per kilowatt hour like it is in Arizona, opposed to the average 31 cents uh, blended rate that we get in California. So in another state like Arizona, it may be worth it to buy the battery because in the e uh, because you're really just not going to be being credited enough to make it worth it to hold and you're still going to have to pay for all this power and the credits won't really cover it here in california because like i said you're getting this uh this abnormally high rate these credits 
generally do cover all of this extra usage. If you put about 110 to 115 percent of your solar production on the house versus what you're using. So then does a battery really make sense for anybody in San Diego? It does. Here are a few of the reasons why you may actually want a battery in San Diego. So with the current net metering agreement in place where SDG&E actually pays you retail cost for your backfed energy, the battery is not a money saving solution. If they are to change this agreement in the future, which they most definitely will eventually, uh, then a battery could start saving you money. But as long as the current net metering is in place, where, like I said, they're paying you retail cost, the battery is not for saving money. But the battery is for certain things. So uh, the benefits of a battery is that it keeps the power on if the grid goes out. Now, this is a question I do get a lot. People ask me, well, if the power goes out, if I have solar, will I still have power? And without a battery, the answer is actually no. And the reason why this is is because, let's say, theoretically, the guy repairing the line is a half a mile away. You can't be feeding live power into that line because that would electrocute them. They need all, they essentially need the line to be, you know, there needs to be no electricity running through that line. And so they need to, they need to disconnect you. If you had a battery, you could temporarily disconnect from the grid and still use your battery power to keep your lights on. So this is definitely a benefit to having the battery, but it's quite an expensive solution. The average battery, like for example, the, the Tesla Powerwall 2, it's gonna cost you about 10,000 plus or minus a couple thousand out the door. So you have to really think about what problem the battery is solving for you, uh, because if, like I said, it's saving money, that's not a problem that the battery is solving. Now, uh, if the power is always going out, then the battery may make sense, because then the software within it is uh, very seamless. It'll keep everything on without you ever having the power out if the main grid does go down, uh, but it is quite expensive. So the Tesla Powerwall 2, uh, out the door after everything, you're gonna be, it's gonna cost you about 10 or $12,000. Uh, and the new Enphase AC battery, which is uh, actually gonna be even higher quality than the Tesla for many reasons for another video, um, is actually gonna be more uh, like 13 to 15 or possibly even more. Uh, $1,000. Now that is before the tax credit. You still get the now 26% tax credit now that it's 2020. Uh, some essentially now that uh, the tax, because the tax credit is based upon installation date. But um, a much less expensive solution that I tell pretty much all of my customers if they are having power outages, but they're very rare and they just want to have power in case of that, you know, more rare event. Uh, I tell them a, a, a generator is a much less expensive solution. Depending on how large this one you get, it could be kind of between one or $5,000 in that range. You won't get a tax credit on it, of course, um, but uh, if it's not really a huge issue and you just every once in a while need to kind of have some power, uh, then that is, your, that is your best bet. So to sum it up, if you're not experiencing common blackouts, you're gonna wanna avoid the battery because they cost more, way more than they're gonna save you. And uh, for the most part, it's not really a huge problem here. Now, if you live in more East County, San Diego, uh, Rancho San Diego, Hamul, um, Alpine, you know, areas like that, you are gonna be experiencing a lot more power outages because of the high winds. And sdg &E has already told us that they're gonna be shutting power off and we've already all experienced it and heard about it on the news. So in that case, definitely consider looking at a battery, but don't think of the battery as something that's gonna save you money, like I said. Think of it as your, you know, your source of power during a blackout. It's, it's more like a necessity or something like that. Um, but uh, for those living in more coastal cities and that's not really a problem, take advantage of the net metering agreement. Uh, that is really in large, like I say here, uh, it's what makes the payback period so short. Here it's like four to seven years for a payback period to occur, which is essentially how many years it would take for your, S your normal sdg &E bills to add up to what the solar cost if you, if you just hadn't done solar. Um, and once again, this is something that is in California specifically. Other states have a much longer payback period, like our neighbors next door in Arizona because of their lower rates and they're only getting uh, about 10 cents per kilowatt hour for back feeding, their payback periods are often over 10 years. 
here it's half the time, just four to seven years, because of this awesome net metering agreement that the state has incentivized us with. So I really hope you found this information uh, useful and helps you get closer in deciding what kind of solar setup is best for you. If you're in the San Diego area, please uh, let me be the guy that helps you go solar. Uh, I'll, it's my goal to give you the best up-to-date uh, honest information. Uh, I feel like in this industry, there's a lot of guys that either don't really know what they're talking about or kind of just pushing people into doing things that their boss told them to do and they don't even know better. So uh, please let, give me a call if you have any questions. Um, I service the entire San Diego area. Um, all right, see you later.